Uh, so now it's my pleasure to introduce uh, Dr. Lin Moi Ling. Uh, Moi Lin is uh, Director of in, um, Infection Control at Singapore General Hospital. Uh, she's actually trained as a microbiologist and is uh, president of the Singapore Infection Control Association, as well as uh, I think the current or past president of APSIC and a member of SHEA. And, uh, you know, Singapore, the, the hospitals there and the way they go about things, there's a lot of very interesting new initiatives going on in, on there. And, of course, there's quite a strong linkage both in, infec in infection control and in infectious disease um, it, with Singapore. If you're an ID trainee in Australia, you can train in Singapore and there's a lot of registrars that are rotating backwards and forwards. So there's been a lot of collaboration. So it's a pleasure to welcome Moi Lin uh, to the stage to tell us about some of those initiatives in Singapore. Thank you very much, Lindsay, and thank you so much for inviting me to this exciting part of your program. And I must say congratulations to Hand Hygiene Australia that you've done well in terms of uniting all your states in this program. And uh, unlike you in Singapore, although we are a very small country, we still do not have a national kind of effort which I could describe as what you've done. So it's been quite exciting listening to all your initiatives and uh, congratulations. So what I can share with you with respect to what we do uh, are really quite sporadic, but uh, we are seeing some exciting developments, not just in the hospital, but also in the community. And so uh, I'll give you some snapshot view on that point. Um, we signed a program with WHO, like many of you, and our minister signed it in 2006. So that's where many things kicked in. And I would say that it's the public hospitals who really led the way when we kind of quickly put into practice all the recommendations that WHO uh, put up in their guidelines. So this was uh, something that we quickly did, uh, putting in our program, the multi-pronged strategy. And in, in the hospital where I work, yeah, so this is what we do. And I would say that this is quite basic. It is something that we managed to bring us up to speed with respect to, you know, pushing up our hand hygiene from as low as 20% to about 70% or so. So it, it's really effective, and uh, we've published this in, in the ARIC. You could read more about it. And what uh, uh, you could gather, for even from the abstract, you could see that not only does it increase our compliance rates, but also it, it uh, reduces the, uh, our MRSA infection rate. So there is an outcome reduction, and that's good. And I must say that the program that we put together trying to do that strategy is something that we have to do on an ongoing basis. So in my hospital, we set aside a budget uh, to do something on an annual basis. And I must say that not all hospitals have a budget, unfortunately. So it was really up to each infection control team to push for it. And I'm fortunate enough to have it in our program with, I've actually designated one of my staff just to be a hand hygiene coordinator for our hospital. And so we are able to kind of consistently do this on a regular basis and just try to move up the mark. And so we're quite happy that we are j part of the four hospitals in the world with uh, recognition from WHO. And we got that in 2011 uh, from Didier Piquet. And this is something which I would like to share with you what we've done. You know, hand hygiene competency is what we hope to see in every healthcare worker, and different hospitals do it differently. Like in the university hospitals, what they would do, they, they would have all their staff go through the uh, glow germ kind of uh, event and scan through the box and make sure that you've got it right, with the pictures and so forth. But we found that to be rather resource intensive, trying to get so many people go through it. And they did it like in a month. But for the hospital where I worked in, which is 1,750 beds and 10,000 staff, it's going to be impossible to be doing that. So what we've done is that we've put in not just online education, but the focus is on competency assessment through uh, answering some questions. And these questions were designed by ourselves. So the questions were kind of formulated in such a way, not too much recall, but really scenario questions which tested their understanding and how they would apply the knowledge they've had to the various scenarios. So we found that really helpful. And uh, the, the twist is not just getting the nurse to do it, but also the doctors and the allied health. And 
you know, implementing it for the nurses, I don't think we have a problem. Everybody is quite happy to do it on an annual basis because they are quite familiar with competency assessment in other parts of their professional life. But for the doctors, to get it going, this is where I'm glad we had the support of our Chairman Medical Board. And uh, we were at that time uh, a year ago looking at what could we use as a quality indicator for the hospital. So this is where I quickly put in the recommendation that we should be looking at hand hygiene. And so I think we are the only hospital where we do this, where the uh, hand hygiene competency assessment by the doctors is a necessary a kind of a thing that they have to do annually, and it's tied to their bonus. Okay, <laughs> okay. So, so this is uh, done quite nicely, and, and so everybody has to do it. So there's no excuse that they can't do it if they really want their bonus. You know, which the hospital is happy to give, but you have to pass this assessment. So each of them has to get a more than 80% passing mark. And the nurses and the allied health don't need a bonus kind of assessment in that list. Only the doctors, because that's the most difficult group to get them engaged in doing this. And uh, so they all hop onto it, you know, junior and senior. And, and, and so, um, and they allow as many attempts as possible. And we found this to be really effective because as they do this, we can see the change even in their practice. And we saw our compliance rates uh, improving. We've gone on to introduce the bare below elbows policy, and I'll just show you pictures of what we've had. Poster, leadership support, and we've also done away with the lanyards. You know? So no more of this kind of lanyard where they could uh, get access to the areas, but instead we use the one that you pull. So, so we made a brave attempt in making this uh, change in policy, although some people were grumbling, but uh, <laughs> you know that helped to shape the, the way we work. And doing all these activities, like I told you, costs us some money because we have to budget for it. But we've worked out that it's more beneficial. A and I show you the analysis that we've uh, done. And, and this is something that's evidence to prove that, you know, it's really the way to go to make an investment in this program for our infection control program. Hand Hygiene Day, which is celebrated by everyone every year, May 5th, around the world, is something that we in Singapore uh, kind of also follow. And for this year, going with what WHO promoted with the relay and so forth. But in a different manner, what we did in, in our hospital is to have the hand hygiene hour. You know, it's just like how people uh, commemorate Earth Hour and so forth. So we had this hour because for 10,000 people, it's difficult to do a relay. <laughs> you know, it will take us many hours and people can't get away from their work. But to do a hand hygiene hour, not just in one location, but in multiple spots all around our cluster. So we did this not just for our hospital, but for the whole corporate organization and, and with 11 institutions. So from one to two, you know, people were just doing it simultaneously. And, and that's a, a great way of celebrating the hand hygiene day. In a different hospital, like Tan Tok Seng Hospital, it yeah, this is a different hospital, uh, regional hospital, and what they did is they uh, focused on in terms of not just the patient, but in the community setting to get people more uh, uh, knowledgeable in terms of hand hygiene. So here you see a picture of how they partner the volunteers reaching out to patients uh, for this uh, year's event. And um, I'd like to highlight this particular one, and. You know, in the community, because we don't have a national program and not many hospitals go out to the community, so this is where we have to rely a lot on organizations and vendors. And this is where I like to share with you what Unilever did, Lifebuoy, where they conducted a carnival at the one of our health promotion board center and reaching out to school children, you know, to, to teach them the importance because if we could start them young, I think that's great. And we learned that during SARS in 2003, where we had all the kids learning the seven steps, but after SARS, it seemed to have cooled off. So this is where we're back again in terms of getting the children engaged. And you could see here that it's not just during uh, hand hygiene day, but also in October, that again, Unilever and, and another company, Dow Chemical, get together to kind of reach out to primary schools and kindergartens and, and helping them to uh, be involved. One of the common infectious disease issues in Singapore is hand, foot, mouth disease. And this is uh, something that's going on to the various daycare centers and even in the little uh, kindergartens and schools. 
So this is where it's quite an issue when a child gets a hand, foot, mouth disease because um, it involves the parents. The parents have to be off work, you know. And although we, many of us have domestic uh, health, uh, um, domestic maids to help us in the work, but uh, when s a child comes down sick, the, the family is involved. And so this is where somebody calculated that it really set a family back by at least Singapore $1,200, you know, with all the costs in. So there's a lot of effort in trying to minimize this, and this is where the schools, the daycare centers, are quite active in, in terms of hand hygiene program to make sure that you know, they don't transmit so easily. And I'd like to share with you this particular program that is uh, mooted by our Health Promotion Board, where they call it the eight step, uh, in the, you know, they appoint student health ambassadors in the various section. And you know, it's, it's more like what we do in, in the hospital setting where you get hand hygiene champions. But here is the children themselves who are the champions who then remind their friends and classmates the importance of observing hand hygiene. So I thought that was a quite a neat uh, kind of uh, idea to get them going. You know, Kaizen, as uh, some of you who are involved in quality improvement, is, is a nice word and we've seen it in many of our uh, projects in the institutions. But similarly for hand hygiene, I would say this is something that has to happen. You know, we keep on improving with respect to our assessment in terms of you know, WHO hand hygiene assessment framework. That's a nice guide, but how do we do it better each year? And it's been a great challenge for us in terms of engaging patients. I, I, we found it quite tough because patients still don't come up readily to tell us, look doctor, you need to clean your hands. You know, and, and if they, Somehow, it, it's just Asian, I think. But, um, and so we've tried getting them involved, but not very successful. So now what we're doing is that we've moved on to get more staff engagement. And what I've shown you earlier is a lot in terms of what we at Infection Control Department have been trying to do to teach people, to design programs. We get uh, ambassadors involved and so forth. But now we are moving one step ahead, and this is where we are thinking of uh, getting the medical students, especially the residents involved. Now, for uh, acute tertiary care like ours, where I work, it's also an academic medical center, and we've got a residency program going on. And the residents are, you know, are started off in terms of quality improvement. So this is where we, we also would like to get them involved in hand hygiene. So I want to share with you what we did. This is a, a result of one of the quality improvement project that we did some months ago by the residents. And what they've done is to try the initiatives with respect, it's very similar to what we've been doing in terms of teaching, getting posters, you know, but you find that it doesn't really kind of uh, give you a remarkable improvement. But the last initiative did something. And this is where they engage medical students who are always with the rounding team every morning you know, to move from patient to patient. So besides just standing and watching what goes on and listening to the various uh, academic discussion, this is where they got the medical student to be involved to hold the alcohol bottle and to start giving out alcohol to people who are examining patients. And that's proven to be quite effective. And so, you know, I call it a butler service. <laughs> And, and so this is uh, very effective, and, and, and we've got the uh, senior management approval at our hospital to get this ho implemented hospital-wide. So we'll, from January next year, we'll be moving on to the respective division to propagate this, and um, I think with this, we should be able to get some improvement amongst our doctors especially. The messaging will continue you know, in all our various uh, publicity program, whether it's the hospital or even the community, and I think it's with big posters and whether it is through uh, even uh, little videos through our TV media, it's uh, something that will continue. But uh, so in conclusion, I would say that the hand hygiene culture is what we need to build. It's not just the messaging, but it's the culture of uh, trying to build it into their common day-to-day -day work or life, whether it's in the school, in the hospital setting, or even in the community. And this is where we are beginning to realize that this Kaizen or continuous improvement process is so critical. People need to understand that and as a stakeholder where they could have ideas coming out and kind of trying it out and then spreading it. So I like this caption where it says improvement begins with 
the letter I, and honestly, it begins with each person and not just the infection control department. So with that, thank you. Mm -hmm.